The next cells are the leukocytes. Uh, also, we call them white blood cells. These blood cells are actually uh, transparent. If we stain them, when, then we can look at them. Uh, we can make a slide of blood cell. Um, uh, if we want to, uh, we can take a drop of blood cell on a slide and uh, make a smear uh, and stain them to observe under the microscope. Um, the leukocytes or the white blood cells are of um, two, are categorized into two main categories. A granulocytes, the granulocytes. A granulocytes are then further categorized into two, uh, the monocytes and the lymphocytes. Um, that is, they are called A granulocytes because they don't have any granular bodies inside their cytoplasm. Granulocytes, granules, granulocytes are the cells uh, as a granulo and sites. Granulo, granules have granules, sites the cells, the cells which have granules inside. When we stain them, we can uh, see certain granules present inside them which are stained. These are three, basophils, eosinophils and neutrophils. Um, these are uh, some cells which are also responsible for different types of uh, allergies, uh, which are also involved sometimes in um, phagocytosis, that is eating large particles and destroying them. Then comes the third category, the platelets. Platelets are uh, the cells, also called the thrombocytes. Uh, platelets are, the, are actually um, fragments of a single cell. A large cell in, uh, called megakaryocyte is present inside the bone marrow. It is fragmented into about, a one, about 1000 cells at a time when activated. We call them platelets. So platelets are the cell-like bodies. The function of platelets is very important in the blood. They causes clotting of the blood. Whenever blood needs clotting, uh, they actually come in action. Now we look at diagrams or pictures of uh, uh, various cells, blood cells, and talk about their uh, functions. First of all, have a look on the picture, not diagram, but a picture. Red blood cells, the erythrocytes, they look red under the microscope because they have a hemoglobin group uh, with an iron inside. In mammals, red blood cells don't have a nucleus at maturity. Initially, they do have a nucleus, but when they get mature, they lose their nucleus. And because they lose their nucleus, we know that nucleus is present in the center. They look like a, a biconcave cell. As you can see in this uh, picture, uh, they, have, they are concave on both surfaces due to removal of the nucleus from inside, destroying of the nucleus in inside. Their most of the cytoplasm is actually filled with the hemoglobin because their major function is to, um, is to carry the oxygen uh, to all the tissues and remove carbon dioxide from various tissues. These cells are uh, not very long lived. They live for about 120 days, that is about four months. And then they die and they are replaced. Red blood cells uh, have to be replaced at times. Uh, body always keep replacing, so it means that keep destroying the old RBCs and making new RBCs. Um, when they are destroyed, they have iron group inside, so they have to be destroyed carefully. Liver is the organ which carefully destroy them and uh, do not allow them to produce any uh, toxicity um, inside the uh, tissues. Now we look at the white blood cells. Have a look on the diagram. This diagram is to show you that how different types of cells are uh, present and moving or flowing inside um, an artery. You can see in the red circle an artery uh, with its lumen from which various cells are coming out. The red ones, biconcave ones are the RBCs. The small um, irregular particles are the platelets and quite large and uh, with a purple nucleus are the white blood cells. So uh, blood is actually the co a combination of these cells with plasma. Now we look at them one by one. We have talk we already talked about the RBC, the red blood cell. Now we talk about the white blood cells. On the top, the two first ones from left are monocytes and lymphocytes. These are agranulocytes. As you can see that in their cytoplasm, no granular, granular content is uh, observed. Monocytes are very large about twice the size of the uh, red blood cell. You can compare the sizes because there is an erythro erythrocyte, the RBC, um, in the lower layer, in the lower side of the diagram. 
Monocytes are large particles. Their function is phagocytosis, uh, to kill the larger particles, which may be bacteria or some other invaders. Sometimes they enter inside the tissues, that is seeps out of the blood and go inside the tissues. Um, at there, they are called macrophages. They change their shape, they modify their shape and they can kill the invading bacteria or other infectious particles. Um, for example, if there, an, there is an injury uh, to a tissue and bacteria invaded um, and uh, uh, blood vessel is broken, then they go out in the tissues and they, uh, con they are converted to the macrophages, uh, the larger, more irregular cells, and they eat up the bacteria in the infectious particles uh, by uh, an amoebic movement. That is, um, uh, extending towards the direction of the uh, infectious particle or bacterium and engulf it uh, by surrounding it with its, their um, uh, cytoplasm in the membrane. Uh, the second ones are lymphocytes. Uh, you can see that their nucleus is so large that um, it, almost, uh, also, uh, it almost covers the whole of the cytoplasm. Lymphocytes makes the circulating antibodies. These are extremely important because when an organism, uh, uh, an invader organism like bacteria or virus comes inside the body, then these, uh, these cells uh, are converted to active antibodies and they identify the antigens that is some specific proteins present on the surface of that organism, bacterium for example, and um, they attack on them and kill them. And more importantly, um, these, these antibodies are uh, a long term memory of the uh, blood because these antibodies then remain inside the cell. If next time that infectious agent come, they quickly go and um, kill them. This is called sort of a natural immunity. For example, against very many various viral diseases like chickenpox, we, once we get this disease, next time we do not get it because our body have made um, the circulating antibodies against that um, bacterium, against its surface antigens and identifies them and then quickly kill them before they create a uh, disease, uh, before we can say they produce the disease symptoms. Then the granulocytes, um, the neutrophils, these are also uh, phagocytes. They also um, engulf large particles which are invaders and they kill them. They usually work inside the blood. Then comes the um, eosinophils. Eosinophils, as you can see, uh, they have a bilobed nucleus. Um, you, you have seen previously that neutrophils have a trilobed nucleus in this diagram, but neutrophils sometimes may have four lobes of their nucleus or may have five lobes. So their lobes of the nuclei are four, uh, three to five. Actually, based upon the lobes of nuclei, we identify different white blood cells because their identification is important. Then, anyway, eosinophils, which have a bilobed nucleus, um, these are uh, specific cells which um, produces, which actually uh, deals with, or we can say kill, uh, the, or attack the parasitic worms. There are different types of parasites which enters in our body. These are the cells which identify those and uh, produce some um, toxins to kill them. The last one are the basophils. Basophils are uh, specific tissue, uh, cells which help actually um, in, in inflammation reaction, which causes the inflammation reaction. These produces when something, some body part is injured, for example, they um, releases a content called histamine, which activates the macrophages um, and kill the, which kill the invading bacteria or viruses or infectious agents. They also release, um, uh, clot, uh, they also release heparin. Heparin is a um, heparin is a chemical which uh, stop blood from clotting. So for some time, they allow blood to enter in that part so that the white blood cells can enter in that area and they can kill the uh, invader bacteria or viruses or other organisms. Now, this is very important that uh, in some diseases and in, uh, in some other conditions, uh, these cells have to be counted. Sometimes, you know, if you have an allergic reaction, or you have a parasitic worm infection, um, uh, you are suspected to have a parasitic worm infection, then your doctor call you uh, to go to a uh, laboratory and get your leukocyte count. Actually, leukocyte count is a uh, count of all these five blood cells. Uh, monocytes, lymphocytes, neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils. 
and their percentages tells the doctor that which problem could exist. Um, if basophils are high, maybe there is an inflammatory reaction. If eosinophils are high, there is a suspicion of, um, there, you are suspected to have maybe a parasitic infection and so on. You can see platelets on the right, small fragments of a cell. Platelets, very, very important. You, have, you may have heard of these a uh, lot many times during the uh, dengue fever outbreak. These are the cells which help, these are the cell-like bodies we can say, which help blood in clotting. If these are less in number, then there is a chance of leaking of bloods, blood uh, from different parts of the body. Um, as you may have heard, that uh, the dengue fever patients uh, may have a decrease, a very sharp decrease in number of their platelets, which may result in uh, the loss of blood from under the skin, from the nose and under the tongue. Uh, so if a dengue fever patient experience uh, spots on the surface of their skin, dhabbe, uh, skin ke upar, neele rang ke asur rang ke par jayin, to iska matlab hai ke unki platelets bohat kam ho gaye hain, और उनका जो ब्लड है वो बाहर आ रहा है उनकी सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम से उनकी वेसल से और ये बहुत डेंजरस साइन है अगर ऐसा होता है तो उसी वक्त फौरन से हॉस्पिटल से कांटेक्ट करना चाहिए सो प्लेटलेट्स दे आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नाउ लुक एट देयर देयर क्वांटिटीज रेड ब्लड सेल्स वी टॉक्ड अबाउट दे आर पर एमएम क्यूब पर मिलीमीटर क्यूब दे आर अबाउट 5 टू 6 मिलियन आरबीसीस as we said, as we previously talked about, that men have uh, quite more RBCs and women have quite less RBCs. But RBCs may be different in uh, people living in different areas. For, for example, those people who are living at higher altitudes, because we know that there is, a, there is a deficiency of oxygen in those areas, they have more RBCs in comparison to us. You can see that their eyes are more and more cheeks. The reason is that they have a lot of RBCs. ज्यादा आरबीसीज होते हैं ये भी एक रीजन है वैसे इसके अलावा और रीजंस भी होती हैं व्हाई दे हैव मोर आरबीसीज बिकॉज़ फ्रॉम बिकॉज़ द द एयर इज लेस सैचुरेटेड विद ऑक्सीजन एंड व्हेन दे हैव मोर आरबीसीज दे कैन एक्सट्रैक्ट मोर ऑक्सीजन फ्रॉम लेस एयर इन कंपैरिजन टू द पीपल हु आर लिविंग इन प्लेन्स एट अ नॉर्मल प्रेशर देन द ल्यूकोसाइट्स इन टोटल दे आर अबाउट 5000 टू 10000 cells per mm cube, all of these. Um, though they have uh, different concentrations, um, the neutrophils are present uh, more, about 62% of the white blood cells are the neutrophils. Um, basophils are about less than 1%. Um, eosinophils are about 1 to 2%. Um, lymphocytes are quite more, about 8 to 10% to make a total of a, uh, say, 100%. And the platelets, uh, importantly, because you should know these numbers, um, platelets are about 250,000 to 400,000 per mm cube. Ek mm cube of blood jo hai, uske andar dhai lakh se lekar, char lakh tak platelets hote hain. This is the normal number of platelets. And these are responsible for, as we talked about, the blood clotting. So these are different types of uh, blood cells which are present uh, in the blood. 